I've always wanted to go to the Nazca Lines in Peru. I've seen a lot of it on TV, I've read about it, and I think it was time to go. So here I am on my way to the Nazca Plains to see the Nazca Lines in Peru. My friend Ivan and I are ready to take off on a 15-seater plane for a 30-minute ride to the Nazca Lines. As the plane climbs upward, we can immediately see the Pacific Ocean. But the sky is overcast with white clouds. Along the way, we have time to take pictures of the co-pilot who greets everyone on the plane. It isn't long till the sky opens up and now we are flying over the Nazca Lines. Off the stern of the plane, we see rolling mountains and plateaus. We see some lines that form a triangle. The first geoglyph that appears is a whale. It was first difficult to see, but as the plane dropped down, we could clearly make out its shape. The plane banks to the right, and now we could clearly see triangles. One triangle shows a perfect isosceles triangle with two equal sides. Another shows an equilateral triangle with three equal sides. So we've seen a triangle, uh, we've seen the whale. Another bank of the plane and now we see the famous El Astronauto, who seems to be pointing to the sky while the other hand points to the ground. Some say he appears to be a fisherman holding a fishing net. The plane banks again and reveals the monkey. Looking at it carefully, it was odd to see a monkey with nine fingers and a spiral-shaped tail. But why nine fingers? The plane tries to give everyone a different angle from each of these places that we go to. Another bank of the plane and a 160-foot-long hummingbird appears with its long beak and tail. It really does resemble a hummingbird as you see a picture of a real hummingbird superimposed in the Aztec culture, it symbolizes consciousness and truth through learning. The next geoglyph is the condor, which is about 447 feet long. From my readings, the condor is the symbol of rebirth in the Inca cross. And the Incas built a temple for the condor at Machu Picchu because the condor is the only bird strong enough to fly up to the heavens and deliver messages to the gods. Our pilot and guide tell us that a Peruvian archeologist Torribus Mejia Cespe started studying Nazca lines in 1927, but they weren't actually studied until Paul Kosok rediscovered them in 1937 when he and another colleague, Bagan, was studying irrigation systems when he flew over them and discovered many huge drawings of animals and geometric designs. The Nazca lines are an area 37 miles long and 15 miles wide. There are two main forms, biomorphs and geoglyphs. The biomorphs are figures of animals and plants. There are over 70 all grouped together. They are very large, with the largest being over 660 feet across. The biomorphs include images of spiders, birds, monkeys, llamas, trees, and human figures. The geoglyphs are a series of geometric forms including straight lines, triangles, spirals, circles, and trapezoids. The longest is a straight line nine miles long. Our guide tells us that archaeologists believe they were made by brushing away the reddish iron oxide covered rocks and pebbles that cover the Peruvian desert. This allowed the white sand underneath to show through. Because the Nazca area is very dry, windless, and isolated, it has allowed the lines to exist for over 2,000 years. The mystery of the lines goes far beyond the creation. The meaning of the lines has fueled debate among scientists and researchers for years. Some theories are simple. The most widely believed is that the lines had religious purpose. They could have been designated as offerings to their gods, who have been able to see them from the heavens. Other scientists say they were used as sacred pathways the ancient Nazca people used during their religious rituals. Then there are people who believe they are remains of ancient airfields used by technologically advanced civilization. The biomorph of a human figure which some believe is actually 
a drawing of an ancient astronaut is often cited as evidence for this theory. There are many people who believe this vanished civilization could have been mistaken as the ancient Nazca people's gods. There are no shortage of theories on why and how the Nazca lines were built. The question is, was it possible these ancient people had tools and surveying techniques sophisticated enough to create such complex figures that span such large distances? Or was it possible the ancient Nazca people were visited by an advanced society over 2,000 years ago? The mystery lingers to this day. It is quite incredible. Very interesting to see these Nazca lines. We just saw the Nazca lines. We're kind of a little bit uh, motion sickness here. You know, but at least you get the idea of what it's like to see uh, the uh, Nazca lines. The Nazca lines continue to intrigue archaeologists, geologists, researchers, and tourists. Why? You can only see them from the air. And the time they were constructed during the pre-Inca Nazca culture, which would put the date at 200 to 600 AD, airplanes did not exist. So why did the Nazca people draw huge drawings that can only be seen in the air? Next point, the Nazca people were unknown people since they left no written records other than the geoglyphs. Many of the geoglyphs are of animals and insects. The hummingbird, the condor, the dog, the monkey, and the spider. What is interesting is that the geoglyphs are made of one line, one solid line, in which the top layer is removed to create the lines of the desert floor. Another interesting thing is that some mountain peaks, it appears like the top of the peak was removed or flattened. They appear to look like landing strips with lines. There are so many lines in the Nazca Plain. One researcher, Eduardo Eran, he was a pilot and Nazca specialist. He has flown over the Nazca lines for over 26 years, and he has spent 20,000 hours flying above the Nazca lines. He has personally mapped and photographed 324 lines, but there are thousands of lines. Some lines are over 10 miles long. Some of the lines are so geometric and distinct that you can see a perfect isosceles and a perfect equilateral triangle. Another researcher, Maria Reiki, a German researcher, spent 60 years studying and living in the Nazca lines. She believed that lines, that these lines are astronomical and they point to some celestial body of the universe. Another researcher, Deborah McLaughlin, a Nazca specialist and marine biologist, she believes the Nazca Desert was once home to sea animals since there was an ocean here millions of years ago. So the Nazca lines depicted some animals and birds of the sea, like the whale, frigate bird. Some researchers believe the lines point to underground wells or rivers because water is essential to the people who lived in the Nazca Desert. Water was one of the greatest concerns to survive in the desert. So one researcher, Ana Maria Cogurno, she believes that the lines point to subterranean aquifers or underground water springs. So the lines point to underground water sources. The Nazca people built aqueducts to trap the water from the ground. The aqueducts were built 2,000 years ago in the Nazca culture. But the question is, why are there so many lines that point to many directions? Then you have the famous geoglyph of a huge man on the side of the mountain. The people call him El Estranauto. He appears like he's waving to somebody up in the sky. But who is he waving to? The gods? The extraterrestrial? Certainly not pilots who flew airplanes since the idea of flight had not yet been conceived at the time of their civilization. So, no doubt, the Nazca lines have been interpreted in many ways and the research to solving the mystery is ongoing. One thing is for sure, you have to come to see the Nazca Lions to believe it for yourself. For me, seeing is believing. So come and see the Nazca Lions for yourself in Peru.